I don't know why they went with Yellow Jacket as the Ant-Man villain. The Anteater seems like a much more appropriate choice. Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe. And ah! Hi, I'm Danielle Defoe, and you're watching Animal Logic. Anteaters belong to the Xenarthra family, along with sloths and armadillos, which I'm sure you can tell by just looking at them. There are four different types of anteaters, all of which fall in the suborder of Vermilingua, which means worm tongue in Latin. But yeah, just like that jerk from Lord of the Rings, except actually cool. The silky anteater, or Cyclopes didactylus, is the smallest of the four at about 14 inches long. The southern and northern tamandua, the tamandua tetradactyla and tamandua mexicana, are bigger, at 3 foot 11 inches long, fully grown. The giant anteater, or Myrmecophaga tridactyla, fully grown are around 5 foot 11 inches long, including the tail. While that may not be giant to you, imagine being a termite and having a snout or tongue 12 times bigger than you break through the walls of your home, pick up and eat all your buddies. I'm telling you, Anteater would be the perfect villain for Ant-Man. Speaking of their tongues, they're absolutely amazing. The giant Anteater's tongue is on average two feet long. They're covered with thousands of little sort of hooks called filiform papillae, which they use in combination with lots of saliva to snag their chosen prey, mostly ants and termites. They flick out their tongue 150 times a minute, picking up thousands upon thousands of them. They have five toes per foot, four of which are large claws and one of which is a vestigial toe. They curl their claws back and walk on their knuckles, like gorillas. If gorillas had blades for fingers, ant eater scissor hands. They use these claws to rip into termite mounds, dig up ant colonies, and also for defense. When they need to defend themselves, usually from jaguars and mountain lions, they rear up on their hind legs and lash out with their sharp claws. Unfortunately, in 2007, a zookeeper in Buenos Aires was mauled by an anteater who was likely defending its young. On a lighter note, anteaters keep their young on their back while traveling, as to appear larger to deter predators, which is officially the cutest form of self-defense. And here's a photo of surrealist Salvador Dali, walking his pet anteater through Paris in 1969. At this point, you might be thinking, how does an animal described as giant survive off of eating ants and termites? Well, it turns out that termites are the most protein-rich food by weight in the world. They're richer in protein than beans, beef, chicken, anything else. Not to get too sidetracked, but how they do it is pretty cool. Their mud-based mounds contain fungus that breaks down grass so that the termites can eat it. They also have bacteria in their digestive system that traps nitrogen from the air. These two things combined allow termites to turn dry grass into a huge source of protein. Anteaters will attack their mounds, but never completely destroy them. This is for two reasons. They are very, very practical. They will only spend a couple of minutes at each mound, allowing the termites to rebuild and repopulate, so that the anteater can return later. The second reason is that it takes about two minutes for the soldier termites to respond, after which the anteater leaves to avoid getting too bitten. In order to maintain themselves, they need to eat around 35,000 ants or termites every day. This diet provides them with little energy, and anteaters have adapted to have a very low metabolism. In order to maintain such a niche diet, they have the lowest body temperature of any mammal, 32.7 degrees Celsius, compared to our 37 degrees Celsius. At night, they can get pretty cold and they use their massive flag-shaped tail as a blanket to keep themselves and their young warm. Not only do they swim, but they also bathe. Unlike most bathing animals, since the anteater's body temperature is already so low, they don't do it to keep cool, but rather to wash off any ants or termites that didn't quite make it into their mouths. In the 1700s in Europe, popular belief held that all anteaters were female and used their long snouts for mating, which is just... What? Also, you'll never be able to unsee this, but giant anteater arms look just like giant panda heads. What? So what animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching!
Thanks, Ants. Thanks.